Um, so welcome to another edition on our videos on Benjamin Academics. Our Facebook page we are Benjamin Academics and on YouTube we are Benjamin Academics Party where you can follow us to get updates, to get our notes each time we upload them. Um, today I decided to work with ordinary level students because it has been a while I have not been with them. So I decided to do um, economics. I decided to revise with them um, the June 3, 2000. So in June 2000, they asked several questions. They said, why do friends integrate practically? Uh, explain how each of the following will influence the location of anyone in the street. We talk about availability of raw materials. We also talk about nearness to market. We, in the question two, they say, sit and explain five functions of the wholesaler and the retailer. They, tell, they also ask us in question three to compare between a public company and a public corporation. They ask us to define, um, to define and explain what it means by demand pool inflation, and then we should give, we should briefly give three measures. And we, um, part two, or is a C part, they ask us to also explain what it means by what pool inflation, and then they ask us to give the measure to remedy it. And in the last part, they ask us the question of no government, no economic or still the way by which the government can improve in the economic development of the country. So, in that paragraph, one we are going to be looking at. Um, the very first part, which will talk about um, um, reasons why firms integrate critically. Looking at the first part of it, we have seen that it is provided by Benjamin Academic Party on YouTube. Just to remember for you to subscribe after you finish watching this video. First, the um, um, firms would like to integrate vertically in order to gain the market. That's one of the greatest things for firms to integrate vertically. When they integrate vertically, they will have upper hands in the market where they can control the, the area. You know, one of the strategic methods of, of marketing is um, where you, you, you illustrate in a place of market where you can sell easily. So firms will easily integrate vertically in order to do what to do. To um, gain the source of what of market, so that's one of the reasons why firms integrate vertically. In number two point, why firms integrate vertically is to um, secure the source of what of raw materials. You know, firms will actually integrate vertically in order to secure a position where they could easily get raw materials where they could proceed in their industry. The third part of it, firms will also like to integrate vertically in order to enjoy economic of scale. What then is economic of scale? That's a question that has to come in your mind. Economic of scale are the cost saving advantages that firms enjoy as a rule large in size. So firms will actually integrate vertically in order to do to enjoy this economic of scale. So the third part of it is to um, is for profit. Firms will also like to integrate vertically in order for profit making. So the fifth part of it is um, firms will also like to integrate in order to have competitors. You know, firms will want to compete with other competitors around, so they actually integrate vertically. Now, in the second part, they talk about, we should explain the ability of um, raw materials. You know, firms are also, uh, production units are also um, like to look at where there is availability of raw materials in order to them, for them to easily extract this raw material, especially these raw materials which are very heavy in terms of, um, of, of transportation, but their finished goods are very light. So this type of firms would like to enter to, um, to situate in areas like that where their raw materials are very heavy or very bulky in carbon in order for them to reduce the cost of, of, um, of producing this good. So um, another part we are talking about um, 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 availability of nearness to the source of raw materials. Yeah. Um, that was the first part, and the second part, nearness to the market. Now, talking about nearness to the market, um, firms will also like to situate where they are market strategies in order to do what to easily sell this their product. You know, especially these goods, which their finished product are more expensive or heavier than their raw material. Firms now would like to situate where there is the market in order to do what to easily transport this goods to the market after it has been proceed. So in the next part, we are going to be explaining a wholesaler and a retailer, which is question two. Now, who then is a wholesaler is the first question that has to come in your mind. That was question two in June 2000. A wholesaler is a person who buys and box from the manufacturer and sells to retailers. Now, what are some of the functions the wholesaler performs is what we are going to be looking at now. 
Now, first of all, the first, the first function that a wholesaler performs, he buys in bulk and sells in bits of wood to the retailer. Now, the wholesaler also finances the manufacturer. It is another function that the wholesaler performs. That means when he buys in bulk, is he um, finances the, the, the manufacturer, which the manufacturer can easily do more of production. The wholesaler also provides warehouse facility for who? For the manufacturer. You know, when the manufacturer has produced his food, the wholesaler will just go buy everything, empty this magazine, and for that reason, the manufacturer will have easy access in order to do all to um, um, carry out activity. The wholesaler also tell the manufacturer or give information, provide information to the, um, the manufacturer about the type of good which um, consumers would also like to, to, to eat or to benefit from. So that's one of the uh, reasons. The, the wholesaler also um, transport his product on behalf of, who, of the manufacturer. You know, some, some wholesalers will buy the good from the manufacturer and transport it by themselves. That is the function that is playing. Now let's talk about the, the functions of the retailer. Who then is a retailer is a question you need to be asking yourself. A retailer is a person who buys and bought from the manufacturer and sells bit by bit to the final consumer. Now, what are the functions of the wholesaler? That's what um, the retailer. That's what we are going to be looking at in this play. Now, he provides variety of goods and services to, to the consumer. Remember, the, whole, the retailer is dealing with the consumer directly. So he provides variety of goods and services to, to, the, um, to the final consumer. The retailer also um, um, good, give goods on credit to the, whole, um, the consumer. Now, retailer, some retailers always provide goods on credit to their um, consumer because they know at the third time the consumer can easily send them their money or pay back to less than no time. Now the retailer also um, give the retailer also give information to who? to the manufacturer. Actually, the retailer will give information to the manufa um, to the manufacturer or to the wholesaler about the um, existence of good, how they are being used, how the consumers are giving um, information about the good. So the retailer always inform the, the wholesaler about the existence of good. So that was that for this video. Um, I think you enjoyed our video on Benjamin Academics. Thank you for watching and hope you subscribe to our channel to get more updates in as much as videos are concerned. In our next video, we are going to be looking at um, the comparing of uh, the public company and public operation. Hope to see you in our next video.